Next up, we have a customer, and her complaint is, I believe her wording was, I have fan cold air, but not cold cold air. So to me, that strikes me as she's probably trying to tell us that she does have airflow through the vents, but it's just lukewarm to, to ambient temperature in the house. So just fan air in the outdoor unit's probably got something going on. Uh, could be any number of electromechanical things, possibly low refrigerant. This side of town is an older side of town. Most of these are gas with uh, ACs, so gas furnace with straight AC. On the other hand, could surprise us and be a heat pump. Uh, all in all though, these are likely gonna end up being an older unit. So finding a leak would not be out of the realm of possibility, but uh, we'll stop by and see if we can get them some cold, cold air instead of uh, just fan cold air. Well, it definitely turned on, but we are not seeing any fan rotation whatsoever. And that sound there is the system in a bypass where the uh, compressor is bypassed internally with this pressure buildup due to this fan not operating. So we'll take our handy dandy tool, try to tap our fan motor. That thing is hard locked. Let me just disconnect the high voltage power. That's a good indication right there. We can tap it now and it spins freely. Uh, however, when power is applied, we tap it. It doesn't go either direction and is a locked rotor. So we'll try just in case this fan capacitor. Oops, not even a screw back there. Alrighty. A spaghetti system for sure. So it's already had a replaced fan motor. That looks like a capacitor for it. Never know what you're going to find on these guys. So 7.5. If you're ever curious, I do that just to hear continuity to make sure my probes are working, everything's plugged in good. We don't have any, any mistakes. So we're looking for 7.5 plus or minus 6. And we are low. We're showing 5. Exactly. We're back. We'll check our new capacitor. Just to be sure. I have seen them come out of the box bad. We're showing 7.67. So within range. We'll go ahead and reconnect here. We'll probably try to find a better way to uh, <laughs> mount this guy as well. Just out of curiosity for now, we'll put it back together and plug it in. Let's see if we get any kind of operation on that fan. It is actually running. So in this particular case, a lot of times, if you tap those motors either direction with a screwdriver or something and the capacitor is bad, it will start because that's what it's trying to do is give it a start direction. In this particular case, it was locked hard enough that I couldn't even move it with a screwdriver. However, we changed the capacitor and it took off. It was free spinning when we pulled the power loose. So that's what made me think, like, well, let's try the capacitor because bearings aren't locked up. So we'll amp this guy out. If I can get one of these wires loose without causing a fun time here. Pulling 1.27 amps. Uh, the uh, locked rotor or, or uh, 
uh, run load looks like 1.7. So we're within amperage range. So I say we're we're done as far as repair. Easy enough, just a capacitor on the blower on the outside this time around. Uh, let's see if we can find a better way to mount this guy, though. Uh, not leave it as quite a mess as we found it. So this guy's definitely been worked on over the years uh, due to the spaghetti, and it's uh, had a motor replaced. So we're going to try to mount this guy in here a little bit, but do be aware anytime you do that. If you're drilling through this back plate, there can be all kind of electronics, copper tubing, parts of the coil back here. So you always want to at least look to make sure you're not going to hit anything when we uh, go to drilling. But uh, let's get this guy straightened up a little bit. take advantage of that screw there. As I say, look behind it just to make sure you don't have any issues. Not the greatest looking guy ever, but... A little bit better than dangling in the uh, middle of nowhere in a cardboard box. So now that I think about it, we did mention it could be a gas furnace over here. Easy ways to ascertain whether or not it is. Uh, if you look down here, this particular guy has a high and a low side, uh, so we know it's got a true suction. Usually on a newer model heat pumps, you won't see a high and a low side, but that is because when it changes positions, these also change positions as a heat pump. So instead of having a, uh, a, a suction side, you'll now have a high pressure discharge side. This will always be liquid, but uh, this gives us a way to check our high and low pressures directly from the compressor. So if you see something like that, you know, hey, it's a heat pump. Uh, likewise, if we look inside, I don't know how well you can see it, but that's our reversing valve down there. So if you see a reversing valve, you know it's a heat pump. And if you pull the cover off and we see a defrost board and basically a whole lot of interesting things inside, uh, toys to play with, then we also know it's a heat pump. Not too bad for 1995. Future Jarrett here. I realized as I was going through my uh, footage that battery apparently died while I was filming, so I lost all of the conclusion. Anyway, <laughs> uh, fairly standard little service call, honestly. Uh, capacitors, they are something that fails fairly frequently. If you can imagine, they're charging and discharging with the AC sine wave, so 60 times a second, and AC sine wave got our neutral up down 120 volts positive 120 volts negative so you get your 240 volts um, so what your capacitor is doing is providing you a phase shift so basically as it charges up it's building up on one plate of your capacitor thinking it can jump across it can't when your sine wave starts dipping again it spikes a little bit so essentially now we have a sine wave and a slightly shifted sine wave uh, what we're doing is your motor uh, is an electromagnet, essentially. So what you've got, if you can imagine your fan motor there, kind of look at it where you've got these lighter and a blue and a light color. Imagine those are two separate magnets. 
So now one sine wave is activating one set of magnets. The other sine wave is activating the other. So one is slightly off. So it begins a rotation. So a lot of times you can tap that fan blade one direction or the other, and it will start rotating whichever direction you tapped it. It uh, doesn't particularly care. However, this particular motor, whoever put it on there, they uh, kind of way overkilled it. It's probably the only thing they had in their truck. But uh, it was a half horsepower motor, and I don't know about you, but 550 foot pounds. So I don't, I don't quite have 275 foot pounds per second in my, uh, in my arm and wrist there. So I could get it to move a little bit, but it's very stiff. I kind of was worried it was a bad motor. However, when we disconnected power, it spun freely, so it didn't seem like a bearing issue. I um, went ahead and checked that capacitor, and if you look into them, they do give you a value and then uh, essentially a little variance, so you're allowed a little bit of play with it, uh, depending on the motor and on the capacitor itself. This particular case, um, it was off a good bit. Once we replaced the capacitor, everything did take off. Uh, what you can have with a failing fan motor like that is essentially our pressure builds up in this condenser. We're not really taking advantage of the vapor saturation point because we have no airflow. So our temperature pressure just goes up and up and up, and eventually inside of our compressor it will try to save itself and has a little pop-off valve. So you will hear that occasionally, a screaming compressor from around the side of the house. They'll do that for a while, but eventually they will overheat, uh, can damage them little pop-offs they're not really made to do it over and over and over again so they'll work for a while and eventually they'll get stuck but um, all said and told fairly standard little service call we run into changing capacitors quite frequently they are charging and discharging 60 times a second plus running into the heat of the summer in your 90s 100 degree weather it can in my experience, looks like basically cooks the uh, dielectric that they use inside of it, and they poof open a little bit, so your plates are no longer either far enough apart or they get pushed together a little bit too much, so you end up with a value that's way off either direction. But anyway, fairly standard, easy enough to change. Got them going, and they had some uh, cold, cool air instead of fan cool air. But uh, we'll uh, get done with this little video, and uh, I'll catch you next time.